So we're going to discuss all about algorithm efficiency. So when we say algorithm efficiency, we're talking about how efficient that particular alg algorithm is. So how are we going to identify the efficiencies? Okay, so there will be a worst case, an average case, and a best case. So let's have an example of an algorithm. For example, if we want to have a game, no? um, let's say, for example, a guessing game. So let's say um, you ask a person to, to guess what number are you thinking of. So nag-isip ka kung ano yung number na gusto mo. Okay? So let's say, for example, guess a number from 1 to 100. And then um, naisip mo is 75. Okay. Then, um, that person will guess your number. So, for example, next start siya sa 1. So, you will say higher, 2, higher, then and so on and so forth. So, how are we going to identify if the guessing game of that particular person, of course, may logic siyang sinusunod kung bakit ganun siya nag-guess ng game. So, malalaman natin on what, if it, how efficient yung logic niya. Okay. How are we going to identify whether it is a worst case an average case or a best case. So how are we going to know if that particular person uses a worst case logic or a worst case algorithm? If the maximum number of operation for inputs of given size. So uh, for example, you yun nga yun, you guess 1 to 100. And then yung pinag-guess ninyo is, ang nasa isip ninyo is 75. And then yung nag guess he always or she always guess the numbers increment by one, starting at one. Okay? So, yun yung tinatawag na worst case. Kasi, bakit worst case? Sabing ganun, maximum number of, 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 of operation. Okay. So, like start siyang mag-guess sa one. Then, you say higher. Nag-start siyang, again, mag-increment by one, magiging two, magiging three, magiging four. So, if you're going to observe on how she or he guess the, the, the number, Medyo antagal bago niya mag-guess kasi nag-start siya sa unang-una and then it increments the guessing number by one. So that's a worst case scenario or a worst case algorithm. Now, yung best case muna tayo before we deal with average case. When we say best case, it is a fewest number of operation for inputs of given size. So that means, for example, uh, you ask the user to, to, to guess the random number okay, from 1 to 100. And then again, the number is 75, okay? Hindi ka nag-start sa 1. You started it on the highest part, for example. Nag-70 ka kaagad. Then higher, nag-73 ka, higher. Then nag-75 ka. Then nakuha mo na yung value. So that's what we call best case. Kung baga, isang beses mo lang mag-guess or dalawa or tatlo mo lang beses mag-guess, that's already considered as the best case. But for the average case, we perform average number of operation for input of given size. If you are under my class during CS127, okay, I ask you to do particularly, I think, in practical exam for module one, I ask you to do um, the searching technique for binary searching. Okay, so binary searching is already considered like an average. Uh, case algorithm. Okay, why? Kasi when we are talking searching, diba, same as guessing game. When we are talking about searching and you want to search that particular value in the list and you are dealing with sequential searching, you started the searching from position zero. Okay? So increment by onion one. So I'm not saying that the sequential algorithm is not efficient, really efficient compared to binary searching. It depends, again, on the time and resources. No? Now, the, it's just an example. Okay? So, how I consider um, binary searching as an average case? Kasi, diba, if you are, for example, dealing with a guessing number, in, and your guessing number is from 1 to 100, hindi ka mag-start sa 100 at hindi ka mag-start sa pinakayos number. Instead, you're going to get the middle part. Okay, so that's the average. So, for example, 1 is the first guessing number. Last number is 100. I'm going to add 1 and 100 and then divide it by 2. So, it becomes 50. So, doon ako mag-start mag-guess sa 50. Okay, 
Now, if that's already like 50, and then the uh, yung nagpapa guess it said uh, says higher, okay. So you're not going to look at the lower uh, lower values. So you're going to look at 50 to 100 na lang. So what are you going to do again is get the average number of operation. So from 50 to 100, so 50 plus 100 is 150. Then you divide it by 2 again. So the answer is like, ano na po? 70 or 75? Tama ba ako? 150 divided by 2. 75, right? Okay, so 75. So 75. So nakuha mo na yung tamang sagot. So that's what we call an average case algorithm efficiency. Okay, now. So the same problem can be solved using many different algorithms. So what are those different algorithms? Let's say, for example, we are going to get the factorial of a number. Or, for example, we're going to sort values from ascending order or descending order. Okay. In factorials, we can perform it in different types of algorithm. It can be iterative or it can be recursive. Okay. So for iterative, if you still remember, iterative is using a looping statement to get the factorial. So let's have an example of that. Okay, so let's say, for example, I want to get factorial of 5. So remember that the factorial of 5 is equivalent to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Or, or it can be also from first position or number 1, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. So how are we going to perform it in iterative? Iterative algorithm. Okay. So I'm going to do the snippet code of that, ha? the important part on how are we going to uh, factor the number. So I need to have, of course, the size of how are we going to, to get the factor. So that's n is equals to 5. Okay. And then I'm going to make use another variable, factor equals 1 semicolon. Then I'm going to use a for loop statement. Then inside the for loop statement, I'm going to declare an index. Okay. It's either I'm going to start it with 1 or start it with the highest. Remember the process can be started with the highest value, which is n equals 5. So I'm going to make use of not 5, but instead n, since n represent the value of 5. And then um, let's have it n. And then i should be um, greater than or equals to 1. Why? Because the value n is 5. So the value of i should be greater than are equal to 1 until we reach the value of 1. Since this we are, this is uh, what we are talking about, the 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay. Next is we need to decrement the value starting from 5 down to 1 and decrement the value of i by 1. So that means i minus minus. Okay. If you want to use the other one for loop, i is equals to 1. This time i is less than or equals to n. And then instead of decrementing the value of i, we increment the value of i. So this is actually the algorithm or the logic when we are dealing with the factorial of a number. Specifically, we have it here factorial of 5. Now, what should be the process within the looping statement? Okay, so to get the factorial of a number, okay, so we're going to use factor is equals to factor times i, semicolon. Okay, so same thing. On this algorithm, same, same lang sila. Okay, so that's it. That's uh, getting the factorial of a number. So let's try to simulate the value. Okay, simulate. Let's have to simulate. n is equals to 5. And then we have the value of factor, which is equivalent initially to 1. And then we have the value of i starting at position. Let's try this. Let's try the first algorithm. Yung i is equals to n. So i is equals to n, meaning start of the value of i is 5. Okay. So let's try. i is equals to 5. So that's 5. Is 5 greater than or equals to 1? True. 
Then we compute for the factor is equals to factor times i. Factor is equals to the new value factor times i. So new value of factor is 5. Then go back to the altering list. i minus minus becomes 4. Value of i becomes 4. Okay. Then test again. Is 4 is greater than or equals to 1? Yes. Then compute for the new factor. So what's the new factor? New factor is factor times i. So the new value is 20 since you multiply 5 times 4. Then go back to the altering list that becomes 3. Check again the expression is 3 greater than or equals to 1. Yes. So again, get the new value of factor by multiplying the old factor and the value of i. So this becomes 60. Then decrement the value of i becomes 2. Then test again is 2 greater than or equals to 1. Yes. That's yes, compute for the new factor. So, computing the new factor is just multiplying 60 and 2. So, that becomes 120. Then, go back to the altering list. I value, I minus, minus becomes 1. Then, test again. Is I greater than or equals to 1? True. Then, again, compute for the new factor. You multiply 120 to 1. So, that's still 120. Then, Alter the value of i. I minus minus becomes 0. Then, test again the expression. Is 0 greater than or equals to 1? False. So, that means we need to stop the execution of the loop. And the final value of the factorial of 5 is 120. So, that's the algorithm. Okay? For uh, iterative algorithm. How about or what about if we're talking about recursive? So how do we perform recursive? So recursive will be at a week. Let's go back. Recursive topic is uh, discussed on week six pa. Okay, pero I can show you how are we going to deal with um, recursive. Recursive is similar with looping, but you cannot see any looping statement like for loop, while loop, or do while loop. It's just like, uh, a function that is calling an instance of another function or calling itself. Ang tawag doon ay recursive. So, how are we going to do that? Again, n is equals to 5. Sabi natin n is equals to 5. We're not going to make use of factor equals 1. Okay? Then, for example, um, main function calls another, uh, another function name. Let's name it as uh, factorial. Sige, sabi na natin na factorial na lang. So, for example, I have int and then I have factorial. Then, I need to have a parameter, for example, x. x will be represented by the value of n. So, that means n, which is equals to 5, will then uh, pass by value to x. So, x will then copy the value of n, which is also equals to 5. Okay? And then, inside the Factorial function, we're going to test if x is equals to 1, then return 1 semicolon. Okay, then let's have else. Or we can actually use another condition if x is greater than or equals to 1. And then we're going to return x minus factorial parentheses x x minus 1. Libraries. So this one is already uh, an algorithm on how are you going to perform the factorial of number using recursive algorithm. So, paano nangyari na umuulit siya? Kung nakikita nyo dito sa part na to, meron tayo ng factorial. O yung factorial na to. It means that you are calling that uh, particular function and this is the function going back, umuulit siya kapag ito yung nagiging true na part na condition. Okay? So, let's just simulate. Try natin. So, sabi natin, n is equals to 5. 
Tapos, ang gamit lang natin ay si X. Okay. Mapala yung pag-ano dito. So, parang mangyayari dito is parang equation. Okay? So, let's try. So, let's say for example, factorial is n is equals to 5. <clears throat> so, what will happen is 5 will be uh, passed through value of x. So, x becomes here, becomes... It becomes like, is 5 is equals to 1. Okay, kasi yung factorial value natin ay 5. Is 5 is equals to 1? False. Okay? So, what will happen is, test natin yung sumunod. Pwede nang else din naman yan actually. If 5 is greater than or equals to, uh, greater than 1 lang pala to. Greater than 1? Yes. So, if that is yes, then we're going to perform return x minus, x is 5. Uh, times pala, sorry. Nakalimutan ko. Not minus. Ayan. Okay. So, uh, let's go back here. X times. Okay. Then, we have factorial parenthesis of X minus 1. X is 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. Okay. So, that's the first one. Next equals again. 5 times. So, we call an instance of a function here, instance of a function, meaning we're going to call itself again the factorial, but now this time the value of x is not anymore 5, but instead 4. So this becomes bracket. Let's make use of the bracket. And then I'm going to use 4 times, and then factorial, parenthesis 4 minus, uh, 4 minus 1 is 3, and then subscript. Okay, then again, then again, another instance of a function, factorial 3 this time. So this becomes 5 times 4 times another subscript, 3 times factorial of 2, parenthesis, close brace. Okay. So that's how are we going to simulate when it comes to recursive call. The next, we still have factorial of 2. So equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. Okay, since 2 is still greater than 1, 2 times factorial. Parenthesis, this time 1. 1, 2, 3. So, I still have one more, factorial of 1. Then go back, x becomes 1. So, this becomes, if x is equals to 1, yes, then we are going to return a value of 1 to factorial 1. So, this becomes 5 times bracket 4 times bracket 3 times bracket 2 times 1. Close, close, close. Okay, then, you multiply the value from this portion, the first bracket, remember the precedence of operator. So, this becomes 5 times bracket 4 times bracket 3 times 2. Then, this becomes... 5 times 4 times 6. Then finally we have 5 times 24. And finally the value is 120. So that's how we simulate when it comes to recursive algorithm versus the iterative algorithm. So we already discussed all about having different algorithms in factorial. So you know already how to perform and calculate it using iterative algorithm and recursive algorithm. So how do we know what's the best algorithm and why do we need to know? 
So again, as mentioned a while ago, we are talking about getting the factorial. So let's change the searching to factorial. If getting the factorial of a value amongst, for example, um, 5, we use um, n is equal to 5. Okay, we have encountered um, in the computer programming when we compute it, no, the efficiency of the program is maybe as not significant as getting the job done because the value of n is just a small value, which is 5. However, if we're going to, for example, change the value of n into a higher value, okay, the algorithm establishing the most efficient uh, uh, getting the factorial of algorithm, okay? So now, to compare the efficiencies of algorithm, we can use computational compu complexity. Later on, we have also asymptotic complexity. So there are two types of complexity analysis, the computational complexity and the uh, uh, asymptotic complexity, which we're going to discuss later on. So both of them, both complexity, okay, considered uh, the time and space as the critical portion, okay, time being the most significant. Okay, so let's have this type of consideration for computational complexity. So how are we going to identify whether that particular algorithm is efficient or the best one or the worst one? Okay, take note that computational complexity is both platform or system and language dependent. Okay, so take note of that. So let's have an example of this. An algorithm will run faster on my PC at home than the PC in the lab. Okay. That's uh, parang a fact. No? A pre-compiled program written in C++ is likely to be much faster than the same program written in BASIC. So take note of that comparison. You cannot compare your computers at home and the computers in the laboratory. Why? Okay? Kasi maybe the specifications of your computer is not the same as the specifications in the laboratory. And then another thing is, for example, that particular algorithm you run it on Java and the other one you run it in C++. So you cannot tell also na uh, it is more efficient kapag niran ko sa Java while running it on C++ or vice versa. Okay? So please take note of that. So that means if you're going to compare the efficiency of an algorithm, all should be run on the same machine. Okay? So, for example, ginamit mo na machine ay i3, so dapat i3 siya. So, kung Windows 10, dapat nasa Windows 10 siya. So, lahat ng specification dapat pare-parehas. Same thing as a programming language. So, let's say, for example, ginamit mo C++. So, dapat C++ din. And then, dapat parehas sila ng version. Kung ginamit mo ay bloodshed dev C++, ganun din dapat to compare to the other algorithm. So, kung mara si recursive, ginamit ko sa C++. Si iterative, ginamit ko rin sa C++. Pwede yon kasi pareha C++. But make sure also that the version of the C++ are the same. Okay? So, yun yung consideration natin to compare whether the uh, algorithm is efficient as worse or best or average. Another consideration, when you are comparing algorithm efficiencies, real-time units such as microseconds and nanoseconds need not to be used. So, you're not going to time it. Parang... Uh, of course, uh, the, the programmer will code it. Then, kunwari yung isa mabilis mag-type, ah, mas, ma mas efficient tong, tong code na to. So, instead, we're going to make use of the logical unit representing the relationship of time and uh, the size of the file or the n. Okay? Yung kanina natin ginamit in the factorial, which is the number of operation. So, that should be considered the time and the size. So, to consider that, we're going to compute for the linear relationship, for example, logarithmic relationship that later on we're going to discuss on how are we going to identify if that particular code or that particular algorithm contains a linear uh, relationship or logarithmic relationship. So, we will do that uh, basically in uh, big O notation. Okay? Now, uh, there's still another type of complexity. So, uh, earlier we did discuss the computational, the considerations on how are we going to compare algorithms if uh, which is um, efficient or which is the worst uh, algorithm or the best algorithm. The next one is asymptotic complexity. So, same thing as computational, it represents also the number of the operation or n and or the, the memory and the t or the time. 
Okay. So complexity theory is part of the theory of computation dealing with the resource required during computation to solve a given problem. So the most common resources from the system is the time, how many steps does it take to solve a problem, and a space, how much memory does it take to solve that particular problem. So remember earlier we uh, compared the identity that uh, only uh, use a single allocation but for the recursive, there are uh, storage or memory to allocate um, the calling of an instance of another function. Let's move forward. Okay. So for asymptotic, how are we going to identify now this time if that particular problem is uh, having a linear relationship, a logarithmic relationship, or a quadratic relationship, and so on and so forth. In your mathematics, you already learned about those types of uh, relationship. So in this case, mowing grass, mowing grass when you uh, mow the grass, uh, basically you perform linear complexity. Why? Because it takes double the time to mow double the area. However, looking up something in a dictionary as only logarithmic con complexity, when you say linear, okay, di ba? Pag sinabing linear, ano lang siya, parang, X, yun lang yung value. Si N, N is linear also. Okay? Now, this one, let's consider this example number two, where F of N is equal to N squared 100 plus 100N plus log 10 of N plus 1000. If you're going to take a look at the terms, there are how many terms for F of N? 1, 2, 3, 4. The first one is quadratic. The second one is linear. The, set, the third one is logarithmic. And the last one is the constant. Okay? So if you're going to change, cha uh, if you're going to assign the value of n uh, from the previous example, let's say for example n is equals to five, okay. For small values of n, the final term is always the most significant, okay. So let's say for example, if we're talking about n is equals to one, and then we uh, change the value of n from this particular equation, since n is one. N squared is just 1 again, 100 times 1 is 100, and then log 10 of 1 is just simply, I think, 0 plus 1,000. So if the value of N is just a small value, then the final term is always the most significant. Okay, So this one is, uh, the, the most significant here is the constant since the value of N is 1. However, if we change the value of N, for example, to 1,000, this 1,000, this is 1,000, this is 1,000. And still, the constant is 1,000. There's no changes, or there's no change in the constant, but there are changes from quadratic, linear, and logarithmic. But uh, uh, take note that in logarithmic function, whenever we uh, deal with logarithmic, specifically in base 10, that is only incremented by 1. So, for example, if that is logarithmic, of, uh, of 1 or log of 1, that's 0. Log of 10 is uh, 1. Log of 100 is 2. Log of 1,000 is 3. So that's only a value of 3. Okay? And then this one, n squared, if that is 1,000, this is actually a value of like a 1 million. Then this one is uh, 100,000, I think. So if you're going to take a look at the, the f of n, the most significant term this time is n squared. And of course, uh, if you're going to deal with the big O notation, or in mathematics, the highest term really is the n squared or the quadratic. Okay, so these are examples of the big O notation. When you say big O notation, that is upper bound. So later on, we're going to compute always for the upper bound of that particular algorithm. So functions of growth of n, g of n is equal to 1. That means it is constant and it's not dependent on n. The size is not the problem or the size is not a problem. But for logarithmic, okay, the growth rate is logarithm. Okay, function grows slowly, as mentioned a while ago, if that is base 10, it increments only by one, starting from zero. Then G of N is equals N, the growth rate is linear. So when you say linear, it is directly proportional to the size of the problem, okay? So time is equals to the size of the problem. N log 2 of N is linear rhythmic. So this is faster than the linear algorithm. This one is quadratic. When you say quadratics, it quadrupled the value 
of the size of the operation. And finally, we have two rays to n or um, let's say a, uh, x rays to n. This is exponential. The reason why it's two rays to n because we're talking about a binary value since we're talking about system. So base two, so that's why two. But if it's just um, uh, a decimal, Okay, that's 10, 10 raised to n. So that's why I can make it x raised to n. So that means exponential. The rate or the growth rate is squared when the problem size is doubled. Okay. So if we're going to again analyze um, the growth rate of f of n from the previous slide, which is n squared plus 100n, log 10 of n plus 1,000. As we change the value of n here, okay, the growth rate of n squared is quadrupled, but the constant value still remains the same. Okay, the logarithmic is just only increased by a value of 1 from 0. Okay, and then linear is just directly proportional to the value okay, of uh, n. Now, um, when we're talking about big O notation, big O notation is used to, to give an asymptotic upper bound for a function. Okay, for the omega notation, that is uh, talking about the lower bound. Okay. So, um, let's have the, ano na lang, yung kung ano yung gagamitin natin. So, ayun nga, upper bound is big O notation. Okay. And for the big O notation, these are the notations that we're going to perform but not all. Yun lang mga simple, like constant, um, logarithmic, can also perform double logarithmic, linear, linearithmic, of course, quadratic, and exponential. And of course, the, the first one that we did is a factorial. For the lower bound, that's actually the omega. Okay? So, how are we going to represent upper bound, tight bound, and lower bound here? So, for, say, for example, your f of n, katulad nung kaninang sample natin na um, n squared plus 100n plus log 10 of n plus 1,000. So this time, we have f of n is equal to n, 2n squared plus 3n plus 1. So how are we going to compute for uh, the options for big O notation, options for big uh, omega notation, and big theta notation? This is upper bound, this is tight bound, and this, uh, uh, this is lower bound, sorry, and this is the tight bound, okay? So, for, exa for example, we need to get the options for big O notation. So, how are we going to identify the big O notations, okay? So, that means we're going to, when you say options, we need to get the growth rate of N for this particular function, okay? So, for the upper bound, so when we say upper bound, obviously, if, that, if this is the terms, there are three terms, the quadratic, the linear, and the constant. Okay, we always get the highest term, which is the n squared. So we copy the n squared. That's the first growth rate of n. Then since this is upper bound, meaning we need to increment the value of uh, the exponent of n by 1. So to get the options for big O notation. So from n squared, which is the, the, the highest term from the function, so the growth rate starts with n squared then the exponent value will added by 1, so that becomes n cubed, n4, n5, n6, n7, etc., etc. Now, to get the, uh, the options for the lower bound, again, get the highest term. Okay? So that's the first growth rate. Then u minus it by 1. Okay? So this becomes like um, uh, n raised to 2 minus 1 is n, minus 1 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. Okay, minus 2 is negative 2, etc., etc. So that's the option for getting the lower bound. Now, if this is the function of f of n and you need to get the tight bound, so this time again, you get the highest term. Copy it for th from the first growth rate of the uh, tight bound, which is n squared. And this time, you did not, you will not add from the exponential value, but instead with the value of n. Okay, so if the n here is just 1n, this is the same thing as 1n plus another n that becomes 2n. Then take note that the exponential value is still the same, which is squared. And then add again another n that becomes 3n squared, another n, 4n squared, another n, 5n squared, etc., etc. Okay, 
So that's actually getting the growth rate options for lower bound, upper bound, and tight bound. So these are just the typical complexities, the complexities that we're going to deal with. The constant, the logarithmic, the linear, the quadratic, the cubic, and the exponential. Okay. Um, let's move here. Let's just have now an example na lang. Okay, here. So how are we going to deal with this? So in this case, there's no f of n, but we need to get the f of n to get the value of the big O notation. So late, um, earlier, so I discussed to you di ba yung the function of n. So how are we going to compute for the function of n if this is the equation? So consider the simple code, this one. For i is equals to 0, sum is equals to 0, i is less than n, i plus plus, then we have to compute sum plus equals a subscript i. So I'm going to copy this code. And paste it here. Okay. Now, kanina given yung f of n. Diba? Yung f of n is equals to n squared plus 100n plus um, log 10 of n plus 1,000. This time, when we are talking about asymptotic complexity, tayo yung gagawa ng f of n to get the big or, or, or the upper bound. So kanina, diba? What's the upper bound for um, n squared plus 100n plus log 10 of n plus 1,000. So, the highest term is always the quadratic. So, makikita niyo Later on naman, makikita niyo dun sa last discussion natin na we always follow the order of the uh, notations kung sino yung lowest at saka yung highest. Ang pinaka-lowest, uh, not included the constant, is the logarithmic. Okay? Now, how are we going to deal with f of n here? I'm sorry. Okay, so how are we going to know the highest term and the lowest term here or uh, the big O notation? Okay, so ganito, we're going to follow yung kanina dito yung nakalagay dyan. So to get the equation, so we need to see and look at the snippet code. Okay, so first question, para dito, ganun yung gagawin natin sa asymptotic. Kaya lang iba-iba sila later on. So we have this i equals 0, sum equals 0, i less than n, and i plus plus, then we process sum plus equals to a subscript i. Okay? Um, to, ano lang, yung technique on how are you going to see whether this particular algorithm is what kind of relationship? Is it linear, quadratic, cubic, um, uh, exponential, or uh, logarithmic? Makikita nyo agad siya doon sa code niya. Okay? Dito, actually, this is a linear one. Bakit, ma'am? Kasi, we only process a single loop. Ma'am, paano kung nested loop siya? Maybe it is a quadratic. Okay? Tapos, paano natin malalaman kung linear siya or logarithmic? O may loop siya. Okay? Tapos, nakita niyo yung pinaprocess plus or minus. Pag plus or minus siya, ibig sabihin linear. Pero kapag nag-multiplication to, hindi plus, at hindi siya minus, kundi multiplication or division, ibig sabihin, yung gagamitin ninyong relationship ay logarithmic. O mamaya, magbibigay ako ng example for that. Okay? So, let's just have this and let's justify that this one is a linear. Okay? So, how? First question is, how many initializations do we have here? So, there are two initializations. Okay? So, what are those initializations? i is equals 0 and sum is equals 0. Okay? So, pag nat na yung, na nasagot na yung tanong na yun, then you use the plus sign. Okay? Next question is, how many times we need to operate or process this particular loop? Ang nakalagay dito ay n times. Okay? So, we are going to make use of n. Okay? N. But, the next question is, whenever we uh, process it n times, sino yung nag alter na value or sino yung nag-change na value? So, pag nag-true ito, pag nag-true daw yung condition na to, sino yung nag-change ng value? Si sum at saka si i. Kasi bago siya bumalik dito. So, ilan yung nagbabago? Yung nagbabago is dalawa. So, that becomes 2n. Okay? So, again, how do we get this 2? First question is, how many initializations do we have here? 
How do we get n here? We ask the uh, we ask how many number of operation that's n, okay? And then next is together with that, it's not plus sign. It, you multiply because that actually contains the number of operation. And how are we going to alter the value? It includes in the operation. So how many variables or how many process we need to alter? So we need to change the value of sum while processing the condition whenever it is true and as well as the i value whenever the value or the expression is true. So that's why we have 2 plus 2n. Okay? So that's the final uh, equation for f of n. But this time, how are we going to get the highest term? So highest term means the big O notation. So to get the big O notation, we just only write or type letter O, big O notation. Therefore, okay, big O notation, parenthesis, inside the parenthesis will be only the highest term. Do not include the value within the highest term. So the highest term here is 2n, but omit the value 2. Just get the uh, notation, okay? What is the notation? The notation is just simply n. So that's the final answer. So this is the equation from this and Therefore, the notation is linear. Okay, so again, we discussed this one, Diva. If you're going to, um, yeah, the yung linear, yeah, constant logarithmic is log of n, linear is a uh, big O notation of n. This one is a uh, linear logarithmic, linear rhythmic. So this is big O notation of n log of n, quadratic is big O notation of n squared. Quadra cubic is big O notation of n cube and exponential is big O notation of 2n. Okay. Let's have another example. So for this code, there are um, nested loop. N. I'm going to copy this one. Yeah. Let me copy it here again. Yeah. Huwag na natin isama ito. Kahit wala naman ito, okay lang. Okay? Alright. So, this time, same pa rin, no? But, uh, if you're going to take a look at the... Let me omit this one. Okay. So, if you're going to take a look at the, the, the algorithm, it's already like nested, no? Nested na siya. And nested. Ito yung outer loop, ito yung inner loop. Pag nag-true yung inner loop, ipaprocess yung sum. Okay? So, ganun pa rin. Kaya lang this time, ang mangyayari is, um, ang tawag dito ay dependent quadratic. O ma'am, paano nalaman na quadratic yan? Di ba sabi ko sa inyo kanina, uh, ang technique, if that is only a single loop, that means the value or the relationship is just linear. Okay? But make sure that the processing within the inner loop uh, within the loop is a plus sign or a minus sign sa para malaman natin or para ma-identify natin that uh, relationship is a linear one okay but again kunwari ang, ang 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 operation is multiplication or division okay a single loop but multiplication or division that means we are talking about logarithmic but this time nested sabi natin when we are dealing with a nested loop dalawang loop to inner loop at saka outer loop that means it's already like a quadratic. But how are we going to justify that this is quadratic and that is dependent? So there are types of uh, quadratic uh, relationship, the quadratic dependent and the quadratic independent. So how do we identify if that particular snippet code or that particular algorithm is dependent or independent? Okay, so if you're going to take a look at the first uh, looping statement, i is equals to 0, i less than n, i plus plus. So, there's no problem about it. But for the second loop, for j is equals to 1, sum is equals to a subscript 0, then j is less than i. So, the condition j is less than i is considered as quadratic dependent. Why? Because, um, J is dependent on the outer loop, which is I. Okay? So, yung technique na lang dito, para hindi na tayo mahirapan, kapag ka yung inner loop 
ay dependent, gumagamit tayo ng n minus 1. Mamaya gagamitin natin yan. Pag quadratic dependent, gagamitin natin yan yung n minus 1. Okay, tapos, ang f of n, kapag siya ay quadratic dependent, ang nangyayari ay parang um, outer loop plus inner loop. Okay? Ayan yun. Outer loop plus inner loop. Kapag ka siya ay quadratic dependent. Pero later on, paano natin ma-identify kung ito ay quadratic independent naman? So, dito tayo. Pag ang variable or ang snippet code or an algorithm is independent quadratic, ang f of n is always okay, outer loop times inner loop. That's the differences between the the dependent quadratic and independent quadratic. Okay, so sa function of f of n, magkaiba din sila. So dito, outer loop, this is the outer loop plus the inner loop siya. Pagka independent quadratic, outer loop is multiplied to the inner loop. So doon mo na tayo sa dependent quadratic. So for the dependent quadratic, same pa rin the question is, okay, so we have to f of n equals so, let's have first the, um, the outer loop. Okay. The question is, in the outer loop, how many will initialize the value? So, sa outer loop, isa lang. Yung i is equals to 0 lang. So, 1 lang siya. Plus. Okay. Plus. Okay. So, next is, ilang beses or how many times will uh, the outer loop operates? Or ilang beses siyang maglulup? n times, kasi i less than n. So, maglalagay ako ng n dito. Okay? Then, habang uh, pinaprocess ko yung n, ilang variables, or ilang, o, oh, ilang variables ang mag a-alter. Ilang variables ang mag-change ng value kapag ito ay ginamit ko. Okay? So, tandaan, kapag ang outer loop, ang pinrocess, damay yung inner loop. Okay, so ilan bale ang mag-change ng value? Ang unang mag-change ng value dyan ay si Sam, 1. Susunod na mag-change ng value ay si J, 2. And finally, kapag na-meet na yung condition na to, pagbalik niya sa outer loop, ang mag alter naman ng value ay si I. So dapat, ang sagot dyan ay, whenever we process n number of operations from the outer loop, there will be three variables to be altered. And that's, uh, sum, J, and I. Okay? Next tayo. Next. Plus. Okay? Plus. So, this plus is already the plus between the inner loop and the outer loop. Okay? So, this is the, this is for the, uh, for the outer loop. And the plus, which is red, is for getting now the inner loop. Okay? So, for the inner loop, Kapag dependent quadratic siya, we're not talking about the outer loop anymore, but we're talking about the inner loop already. Okay, so for the inner loop, okay, ang question lang is, if that is dependent quadratic, we're not going to ask how many initialization will jump here. Okay, so we'll jump on the second question again, which is, ilang number of operation ang ipe-perform ng inner loop. Okay, so... Ilang beses tayo magpe-perform? I times. Okay, yan yung I times. Pero, di natin pwedeng gamitin yung I kasi we always use variable N for the number of operation. So, instead of using I, we're going to make use of N. But still, N is not the same N on the, ano, on the outer loop. But still, we need to use N because we do not use I as our uh, variable for the number of operation. We still always use N. Okay? Then, since J or the outer, uh, the inner loop is dependent to the outer loop, we just multiply this one to N minus 1. Okay? So, that's the difference kapag kinumpute natin later on yung sa independent quadratic. This one is dependent quadratic. So, again, the first one is the outer loop. You ask how many initialization. 
how many numbers of operation, then within that operation, how many variables to be altered, plus then you ask how many number of operation will perform by the uh, inner loop. Pinakagad, skip nyo yung initialization, eto kagad. Then change the value of i to n, kung ano mang variable yung ginamit. Then you multiply it to n minus 1. That's quadratic dependent already. Then you finalize the answer. So this becomes equals 1 plus 3n plus you multiply n to n minus 1. So this becomes n squared n squared uh, minus n. Okay, so 1 plus 3n plus n squared minus n. Then simplify further. So this becomes 1 plus 4n. Uh, sorry, plus 2n. Okay, 3 minus 1 plus n squared. So I got it. Okay. Now, okay, so there are three terms, constant, linear, and quadratic. So to get the big O notation, therefore, big O notation within the parentheses is n squared. You just simply get the highest term and put it in the parentheses of the Big O notation. So, that's it. So, you may use the caret or you may use the squared, ha? Yung naka-raise to 2 siya. Okay? So, in deriving big O notation from f of n, okay? So, the first one we need to know is, in each term, you set the coefficient of the term to 1. Then, keep the largest term in the function and discard the other. So, remember here in our previous example, we will simplify the value and then we identify which is the highest term. So, in this example, the highest term is n squared. So, we just omitted 1 and the 2n and we just copied the highest term. So, take note that terms are ranked from lowest to highest as shown. Okay? So, from lowest to highest. So, that means the lowest term is log, logarithmic. Okay, followed by linear, followed by linear rhythmic, followed by quadratic, cubic, and exponential and factorial. Hence, the seven standard measure of efficiencies are, if you're talking about logarithmic, you get, if, if the highest term on that particular f of n is the logarithmic, then you use the big O notation, parenthesis, and then the log 2 of n. If, for example, that's um, quadratic, the highest term is quadratic, same thing as in our example. So, you use big O notation, parenthesis, n squared. Okay? So, this is just how are you going to differentiate the big O ranges. So, remember, again, the growth rate. So, if that is n, directly proportional, log n, the growth rate is slower, right? The linear rhythmic is uh, faster than the linear relationship. Quadratic means the growth rate is quadrupled, the size, okay? So, take note of that. So, that's all about uh, uh, big O notations and complexity analysis.